Do you believe that the Lord has heard our prayer this morning? Yeah. Yes. So we have prayed and we have believed in Jesus' name and everybody shout amen. Amen. Come on, give him a good amen. amen. Even as we go into worship and to praise, we started by saying in Psalm 100 that we are entering his courts with praises this morning. We are entering his courts with thanksgiving regardless of what is surrounding us. So I want you to put your hands above your head and give him a clap offering this morning. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo. Has the Lord been good to you? been good to you. Woo, Today we are going to sing songs of praise and to give thanks to the Father for being so good to us. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
words. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That song simply says he will never change. Mungu wa Musa yule. Na wayakobu yule. Wewe ni yule yule. I don't know what it is you're going through. But that God is the same God. The God who, who healed very many years ago. He's the same God now. In that situation, he is the same God now. Why don't you just lift up your hands? Why don't you just lift up your hands? Jesus,
the Lamb of God, glorified above all things, He is God. Raise up your heart this morning, child of God. He is God and the Holy Spirit is in this place. He is God and He raises up the standard of worship this morning. He is God and He raises up the standard of praise this morning. He is God and He raises up the standard of worship this morning. Adoration in his holy presence. In the court of heaven, there is worship. The angels cry out, Holy. Just go on and say, Holy, Holy Lord, God Almighty. This morning we worship you, Jehovah God. How beautiful you are, oh God. How mighty and majestic you are, Jehovah. How beautifully enthroned you are, my Father. How awesome, Jehovah God. Lord, see my father how you have opened up the earth as a scroll Jehovah see my father oh Lord how your majesty and your splendor goes forth my father see Jehovah my God how you come down in power and in majesty for the glory of your holy name we enter into the courts of heaven and join the 24 elders and join the angelic hosts of the heavens and join the seraphims and the cherubims of heaven this morning my god we enter into the courts of heaven because the lamb of god has been slain because jesus christ the lamb of god the king of kings and the lord of lords rises up in power raise up your voice child of god and adore the lord god almighty he is god this morning he is mighty this morning Raise up your voice, oh child of God. Child of God, raise up your voice up and say, Father, we worship you this morning. How beautiful you are, my God. How enthroned you are, Jehovah, in the midst of the assembly of your people. How glorified you are, my Father. Jehovah, my God, in the assembly of your people, Jehovah. Ah, Lord, see how beautiful, oh God. Splendid you are in the midst of your people. Thank you, Jehovah, my Father. You know, when we raise up our voices before the Lord, and we raise up our hands in the position of surrender before our God, ah, this is the position of eternity. This is the position when we cry out to the Lord and say, Father, I want to enter into eternal life.
Yes, Jesus. Oh God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Yes, again, that's the congregation. Ah! Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty this morning. You are God and mighty. Mighty in power. Glorified in Jesus' name. Ah! The back, join in and let us go before the Lord. Ah! Yes, Jesus, we worship you this morning. Yes, Lord. You are. Ah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Minister unto your people this morning, Jehovah God. Minister unto your people this morning, Jehovah my Father. Let us go on. It is the position of eternity. It is the position of eternal life. Uh, it is the inheritance of God of our spirits. Uh, when we enter heaven. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Worship team, you can join in now. Jesus Christ, the heaviness of the glory of God, the power of the majesty of the King, he is the Holy Spirit, the governor of our spirits, the governor of our glorified selves, because when we enter into the glory of God, the blood of the Lamb is mighty and powerful. He says that the Lord God Almighty is our God. Jesus Christ, our Father. Ah, God, God Almighty. Jehovah God. Ah, Rikeba, Son, Tolobo, Sakra Sakata. Ah, Jerebo, Kapra Sakata, Nabo. Reketa, Salabo, Mata, Takasea. Reketolobo, Sekretena, Sasaya. The bronze, the Prakana, the Kuche Hobako, power and majesty belongs to you, power and might belongs to you, glorify to Ache Hobako, just go ahead, O Savagoda. If you're not speaking tongues, speaking tongues this morning, if you have to proclaim the power of God up, now get on up, get on in battle, because the Lord Almighty. Is mighty in power. They can press a tapola. They be a Messiah labo. Reto komo se she In the name of the Lord Almighty, mighty and powerful you are. Jehovah God, rise up in majesty. La koto marina se kela sala. They proceed to the Father, man. They kela reshe. They broke up on the tada da yada. They koso tolo mo se pe ya nasika. They baga na sai. Spirit minister unto your people this morning. Ah, 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 ah. The families that are being redeemed this morning are because the Father is in the midst of the assemblies this morning. Ah, the Father is in the midst of the assembly this morning and He raises in power, He redeems in glory, He comes in faithfulness, ah. He comes down in the scepter of His authority. Jesus Christ our Lord, the power of his majesty, he stands in glory. Let us be silent in the presence of God. Just holy silence. Just holy silence. And for a moment, listen to the Holy Ghost. Listen to that still small voice that is whispering in your spirit. Telling you, son, daughter, I am here. I am here and I reign in power. I reign in majesty. I reign in glory. And the 
Listen. 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 He is the Lord God Almighty. Appreciate the Lord this morning, child of God. Let's put your hands together. And appreciate the Father. One thing I love the Lord is when we open our hearts to Him, He responds. He responds. When we open our spirits to Him, He responds. And does not just respond, but he responds in faithfulness. He responds in love. He responds in victory. He responds in power. In the book of Revelations, he says, the scepter of iron is in his hands. And he thrashes into pieces every piece of clay that stands in the midst of him and us that we may experience his glory. I don't know the God that you worship because the God that I worship, my friend, cannot stand any piece of clay that will separate me from his love. By his scepter of authority, he will thrash it into pieces that he should come to where I am. He is the Lord God Almighty. When we say that he reigns, he reigns forevermore. When, he say, when we say that the power of heaven and earth is in his hands, it is not just words. Those are words of power and those are words of reality. The glory of God comes down in his power and in his majesty. The splendor of his presence dwells in the midst of his people. And he comes that he will speak beautiful, wonderful, amazing grace, loving spirit into our spirit. So this morning, I don't know what is so heavy in your heart. I, I just feel like I, 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 I want to say this because I don't know what is so heavy in your heart that the Lord cannot reign over. I want us to re-sing that song, Tawala, Roho Tawala. And as, as we sing it, I don't know what it is that is so heavy in your heart. I want you to lay it down before the Lord. I want to say, Father, you reign. Oh, Lord, you reign. You reign even over this situation. You reign over it because the Lord is God. The scepter of his majesty and the scepter of his authority reigns from everlasting to everlasting in Jesus' name. Can we sing that? sing that song with revelation. Ha. I don't know what it is. Just lead before the Lord. Whether it is, I don't know what. Firstly, whatever it is, you can hold the hand of your neighbor and believe with him. Just believe with him. Whatever it is, believe with him. Jesus, thank you, Father. Just sing it with us. Raise up your voice and just say, Ray, Lord. Ray. Reign over it. Reign, Jehovah God. Reign, Father. Ah, you reign, oh Lord. Jehovah, my brother, you reign. Oh, wow. 
you father to reign we welcome you father to reign just go ahead and declare and welcome the lord to reign in that situation i don't know why i had to do this but i just know that there are people in this congregation that the lord has to come the lord has to show up the lord has to show up this morning the lord has to show up the lord has to come because ah, 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 it is enough just believe in him. Raise up as a faith this morning. Just say, Father, you have to come. You have to come. Daddy, you have to come here. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes. aspect of our lives, Jehovah God, you reign. In every aspect, Father, of our decision making, you reign. In every aspect, my Father, Lord, of the affairs, you say that you are the God who deals in the affairs of men. Lord, in every of our affairs, Jehovah God, you reign. You are the Lord, my Father, Lord, who knows every single detail every single step, every single one of it, you reign over it, Jehovah God. And in all things, Father, you work for the good, for those who call upon your holy name, that Jehovah God would have testimonies even in the world, that indeed our Lord is good, his love endures forever for the glory and honor of your holy name. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks this morning. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks this morning. Ah, put your hands together nicely for the Lord. Yeah, put your hands together nicely for the Lord. You can add a shout if you can. You are in the presence of your Father. Yes. Ah. We come to church to win and to victor over the, the things of the enemy. Amen? We come to be energized and to be given strength to go out there and victor and conquer. Amen? That is why Jesus says, occupy until I come. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching this morning. But let me not preach this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I appreciate this wonderful team. If I were them, I would not have gone to sit down. Because they have done a better job than those clubs, yeah? So I appreciate them, children of God. Thank you. You can have your seats. You can have your seats. Thank you so much. Um, Karibuni sana to Trinity Chapel Nakuru. Ah, uh, here we grow deep. Ah, uh, ah, uh, here we grow deep. And wasn't that worship deep? It was deep, yeah? This is the beginning of our worship service and the beginning of our team's service. So if you are a 13 to 19 team, yes, kindly proceed to your service. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, where are you teens? Teenagers? Teenagers? Yeah, thank you. 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, teenagers. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much. Have fun right there. Glorify the Father. There's a lot of echo here. Uh, glorify the Father and uh, worship him. He is your God. He loves you very much. Good morning, Trinity Chapel Nakuru. Good morning, Trinity Chapel Nakuru. Uh, you know me. If you don't respond, I'll make you respond. Cindy, See, you know me. Thank you. 
Good morning, Trinity Chapel Nakuru. Ah, that sounds more like it. My name is Job Wesonga. I love the Lord. I am a child of God, called to be his servant and his son till he returns. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Um, I don't know. There are, every single Sunday, for me, I'll tell you for free. For me, I, I, I look forward to every single Sunday because Pastor Charles, <laughs> in a very beautiful and awesome way, has been talking about these three letters. <laughs> I don't know, three letters for a whole month. Pasi, your grace under kind of tupati, eh? Honestly, yeah, thank you. See, we appreciate our pastor this morning. <laughs> Let us appreciate him. It is not easy to stand here and preach, amen? For one minute, just close your eyes and bless this man of God kindly and pray over his life. And say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, thank you for our senior pastor. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us an awesome and amazing man of God to lead us and to speak to us and to bless us every single morning. We pray over his family. We pray over his life. We pray over his children. We pray over the affairs of his life, oh God. That Lord Jehovah, Father, because you have positioned him at such a time as this, Lord, Father, would you watch over him for us? Just stretch your hand over him and pray something. Say something about him and speak to the Lord. Because, yes, he prays for us, but it is our duty to pray for him and for his family. Thank you for Pastor Chero. Thank you for the children of God. Thank you for every single thing that deals in his life. Because in everything, in everything, Jehovah, we are grateful for giving us such, such a vessel, such a vessel my Lord, to be able to lead us. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. appreciate you. Uh, we love you, Pase. We love you so much. Uh, I'm supposed to do so many things, but our time has really gone. So <laughs> I will say one thing. Uh, I just want you to turn it to your neighbor very fast. And because he has blessed us throughout this month, I don't know what has stood out for you in this sermon series called Joy. I don't know what has stood out. Uh, Blessed be the Lord God Almighty for those who have not been in church for the whole month. You can look for a person who has been in church for a whole month and share with them before we say something. Amen? Yes. So, yeah. Just talk, 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 wherever you are. Talk. What has stood out for you in the Sermon Series Joy? What has stood out for you in the Sermon Series Joy? What has stood out for you in the Sermon Series Joy? If, if you have not been in church... Go to where someone who has been in church has been. Rachel has been in church and she is alone. So someone can come here. <laughs> Amen? One minute gone. Two minutes gone. Three minutes gone. And gone. One person. Or two. Two volunteers. You want to share... Uh, something that really stood out for you in the service. Uh, if you don't volunteer, I will volunteer. Any, any volunteer who wants to share something that really stood out for him in the service? Anyone? Ah, thank you. Ah, that is one. Any other? Number two? Yeah, you can stand up. Appreciate her. Praise the Lord. I, I think for me, it's uh, what was preached last Sunday, the word that was shared about spiritual growth. Like we need to work on it. It's work. We won't just grow by, you don't just grow, f uh, you, you have to put work into it and you have to associate yourself with people who are growing. Like look at your circle. Are they helping you to grow spiritually? Amma, you're just sharing memes. Ah, <laughs> ah, appreciate her. Yes. So if you have friends that you only share memes and parties and road trips, think again. Cindy? Cindy? Yes. Any other person? One more person before I close this. One more person. I will volunteer somewhere. And he's looking at me and he knows and he'll start laughing. Okay. Ah, good. Good morning, church. 
I think for me, what stood out for me during this month is about uh, when we're being taught about unity and uh, the oneness that we need to have in the body of Christ. So because I know when we, uh, we work as oneness, God commands a blessing upon us. So yeah, that really stood out for me this I month. Appreciate her. Thank you so much. I did that. I was supposed to do that last. I did that at the beginning to encourage everyone who does not come to church on Sunday. Please come to church on Sunday. Yeah, it's good that we are on Facebook. Hi, guys. Hello, Facebook people. Karibuni sana to Trinity Chapel Nakuru. Yes, you can like, share, comment, all those things. TikTokers and uh, YouTubers and vloggers. That is a common statement, right? Like, share, subscribe, comment. Cindy, Wasani. So Facebook guys, you can share. So thank you so much for choosing to worship with us this morning. Please come to church. Um, our services begin, Pasi says 10, I say 9.30. Yes, because 9.30, that is where we engage. Say engage. Engage. Let me say engage. <laughs> okay, so, so, so that's where we engage. That's our intercessory service from 9.30 all the way to 10. And uh, a wonderful team is here to just uh, lead us into worship and serve and prayer. And then our worship service begins at 10 all the way to 12. And then our teen service, of course, starts at around 11. So Karibuni Sana, and it is an honor, a big honor to have you uh, every single Sunday to choose to come to worship with us. So appreciate yourself, our regular... Uh, loyal members of Trinity Chapel. However, there are those who are our guests this morning, and we want to appreciate you a lot. You are our guest, a guest of honor this morning. The people who are worshiping with us for the very first time, you have never been to Trinity Chapel Nakuru. This is your first time. We want to appreciate you. We want to celebrate you. We want to say thank you so much for choosing to come to worship with us. If you are there, Kindly let us see you, you by the, you know, by the show of hands. We won't, we won't tell you to, ah, thank you so much. There's one at the crash. Thank you so much. Um, there are two here. Ah, appreciate them. Look at them. Look at them. Ah, look at them. There they are. Our, our special people this morning. Appreciate them better, church. And Karibuni uh, Sana, our ashes will give you a, a package, a welcome package. Uh, fill it up, and uh, you can drop it into the uh, into the offertory basket. After the service, there is a place set for you because you are a guest, and our guest, a very important person. Uh, hey, okay. Person normally says garage. Uh, on my left, you will walk down the aisle. Okay, uh, you will be our bride this morning, and groom. So you will walk down the aisle. At the far end, you see a building. Do you see a building? You see a building? There, a small building, smaller than the bigger house. You see it? Good. Some people call it a garage. I want to call it a welcome, a visitor's welcome lounge for this morning. Amen? Now, if you drop down on your left and go through the in between those two houses, there is a door on your right. Okay? Enter that door. Someone will be waiting for you there. Okay? Karibuni sana. Appreciate what we tell our, our, our visitors. What do we tell our visitors this morning? Thank you so much. Um, very quickly, before I welcome Pasi on, a uh, few announcements that are coming to us. Um, one, uh, last week we was told about the teens camp that is beginning this coming week, okay? Uh, so parents, we really encourage you to send your teenagers to this camp, okay? Yeah, it's only 500 shillings. Uh, is, is, is Nathan or, yeah, Nathan is here. Nathan is that guy there. Yes, you can see him or any of our pastoral team members. Um, they will be able to, um, will be able to lead you further. And then after that, the the other week, it's our uh, Discovery Kids Camp as well. So after the teens camp, we get into Discovery Kids Camp, okay? So just prepare, prepare your children, prepare your teens. I will tell you for free. 
Those camps are amazing. I will tell you for free. They are amazing. Instead of uh, children sitting at home playing football and uh, PS, uh, let them come. Amen? Let them come. Hey. The Spirit says, ah, we don't know that scripture. The Spirit says, ah, uh ah, -uh. the book of Revelations. The church says, Ah, Pasi, tuanze Bible reading marathon kwa ikanisa. Sindio, the spirit says, come. Sindio, and the saints come, say, come. So we are also telling you that your children, come. Sawa, sawa, good. Uh, <laughs> who was here on Friday evening? If you're here on Friday evening, just like do this. Okay. If you are not here, ask those guys what happened here on Friday. <laughs> yeah, just ask them. They, 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 you know, you know, you know, Pasi stood here and told us, hey, come on Friday. It is true. See, Pasi stood here and told us, come on Friday. Cindy. And then uh, some of us came. Some of us obeyed and came. And those who came. Uh, at the act of obedience, we were blessed. Sindio? Stuli barikiwa. Natuka barikiwa fully. Sindio? Yes. So, please, when persistence is a spiritual authority by the way. I think we should have a sermon series called Spiritual Authority. But anyway, yeah. Hey, he said, come. And then those who came received their, ble their blessing in the worship cafe. You understand? Worship Cafe was here on Friday. Guys, Worship Cafe was, I don't know, I don't know even how to put it. I cannot explain it and describe it. The next one, however, for those of you who missed, okay, if you want to know what happened on Friday, on 15th of April, 15th of, put out, take out your phone. Everyone, take out your phone, take out your phone. Relax. Relax. Pass you, you have had that cry. You have had it. Your cry, ma'am, your cry has reached the right ears. <laughs> Amen? Yes, thank you. Uh, go to calendar. Go to calendar on your phone. And set, go to 15th of April. And set an event. Yeah? Yes, create an event on 15th of April. So that when you are putting all other appointments out there, 15th of April, 6 p.m. is booked. Amen? Amen? 15th of April, 6 p.m. is booked. 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. We will have a worship cafe here. So come, let us uh, have a beautiful time uh, before the Lord. Ha! Okay. The three... Magical letters of this man. We close them. I don't know if I see you are closing that, that, that one. I don't know which, which flap of that one you are closing today. But I am expectant. Are you expect, expectant for the message today? Are you expectant? Appreciate our pastor even as he comes. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. <laughs> that is what you expect from an evangelist. Uh, he wants to lead people to Christ, preach, and do everything in one service. But we praise God for a song. <laughs> Are you okay this morning? Yes. Did you say hi to your neighbor? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. We didn't have an opportunity to say hi. You know, just turn to the person sitting next to you, Mwambie Abariyako. Good to see you. You're looking very good. I have not seen you for a while. Where have you been? Wow. All right. Thank you so much for just joining us this morning. Uh, I see the rains are here with us. Uh, it's such a blessing. I'm sure you're feeling nice like I am today. There's no heat, and we praise God for that. Amen. Amen. All right. So this coming month of April, we have a few activities. We have the camp, the teens camp that is starting tomorrow. Uh, if you're a teenager, if you, if you know a teenager, please invite them to join us the, the rest of this week, every single day. Uh, it's just 500 bob. And then the week after that, we have our kids camp. 
that starts again on Monday all through Friday. Starts at 9 a.m., goes all the way to 4 p.m. It's only 500 bob again, all right? I asked you last week, if you don't have kids, or if you have kids and you want to support this, um, please go ahead and, and support that. We'll put the numbers where you can send the M-Pesa uh, for that at the end of the service. So please uh, just plan to do that. Again, on, in April, the 17th of April, uh, Easter weekend, we have baptism here. If you've not been baptized, we encourage you to sign up at our information desk at the end of the service. Uh, if you want to know more details about what this baptism is all about, we also encourage you to go to that desk. Or you can come and see me, and we can talk about that. Uh, but Pastor Ricky will be taking uh, the team that will, be, will have signed up through a class of what baptism is all about, what we as a church believe about baptism. Uh, and it's going to be a very, very good class. Amen. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah, I think this month for me has, has really been an interesting month. Um, uh, I was just speaking to my wife, Chero, last night about how I feel like the month has just gone by. Can you believe next week it's April? It's April already, eh? You know, the, the year is already going too fast. 2022 is almost halfway and um, I don't know if you had plans or things that you're planning to do for this year. How is that going? How is that going? You're planning to start a business, you know? How is that going? Is it okay? Let's continue trusting God because with our own strength, we can't do. You know, the Bible says that we plan, you know? We can plan all we can, but it is God who establishes what we plan. So if you had planned something, I'm not discouraging you. I'm not saying, hey, how is it going in a, in a negative way. I'm actually just asking, are you still praying about it? Are you still trusting God that he will come through for you? Or are you just saying, hey, it's April. I think I'll start next year. Gym people. <laughs> it's still early, guys. You can sign up uh, this coming month and you can join a gym if that was your wish. Um, or a running group. You know, if you wanted to join a running group, I wanted to join a running group. I think the dust was too much. <laughs> All right. So I want us to go. This month we've been talking about joy. And this morning we're in Philippians chapter number four. And I just want you to prepare your hearts because we're going to be talking about contentment uh, this morning. And, and I, was, I was studying this week and preparing and, and thinking about this. I, I, I really asked God to work in my heart first because I, I feel like I need this message more than anyone else. Um, you know, we grow up young. And, you know, we want to reach for the skies. We want to have a big house, a big car, nice phone. We want to have it all. And, and God is like, contentment, contentment, contentment. So this morning, I just, I just pray that the spirit of God will, 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 you know, work in your heart as we go through this, uh, through this message this morning, that the Holy Spirit will come and just whisper to you. Um, and there's a song I want us to sing. You know, I, I love singing. Uh, it's called Shuka Roho Nautakaso. Sorry, if you don't speak Swahili, by the way, we apologize. But man, God bless you for coming. <laughs> I don't know if we have the lyrics. But it's an easy song. Shuka Roho Nautakaso. Shuka na uwezo wako. Mahali. Dani yako kunazo nguvu. Wewe ututosheleza. I mean, the Holy Spirit, God, is the one that satisfies us. Like nothing can satisfy us, guys. Nothing can satisfy. If God does not satisfy, there's no void. Nothing can fill that void if God can't fill it. Okay, so let's just sing together. Shuka roho na uta kaso Shuka na uwezo wako Dani yako kuna zonguvu Wewe unito sheleza Wewe unito sheleza Wewe, wewe unito sheleza One more time Shuka roho na utakaso Shuka Shukan 
Spirit, this is our prayer this morning that you come down, come and sat, sanctify us. Sanctify us, oh God. There are some of us who are seated here this morning and our hearts are filled with guilt. The Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I pray that your spirit will give us freedom this morning to receive from you. In the name of Jesus. Come, Lord, with your power, with authority. Come and calm our hearts. Those of us who are here and we are anxious, we have troubles that are ringing in our minds, problems, Lord, that we cannot shake off. Come, Lord, and just speak your peace over us this moment. Come and do it for the glory of your name. And Lord, come and satisfy us. Lord, we are worried about many things. We are worried about many things. When will we get this? When will we do this? When will we be able to accomplish this? We are worried about a lot, a lot of things. May you satisfy us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in Philippians chapter number 4, if you have your Bibles, please stand there. If you have your iPad, phone, gadgets, just turn with me to Philippians 4. We are going to be reading from verse number 10 downward. Thanks, Nate. It says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I, I am to be content. I know how to be a bust, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to, be, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, and sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So today we come to the close of our series on joy. I want just to remind you that in the first week we were talking about joy. Okay. And the journey of joy and we looked at Philippians chapter number 1 and we looked how you know what makes us joyful and Paul you know we spoke about the keys of joy and one of them was remembering the good in life remembering that God is working all of us relationships with other believers believers gives us joy and when we pray for others we find joy okay the second week we spoke about joy in unity and we saw that in Philippians chapter number two, how Paul was commissioning this church and telling them, be united, be one, have one mind, be like-minded, um, just as Christ and the Father and the Son are, uh, and the Holy Spirit are one. And the third week, last week, we look at joy and growth. And we asked you, the question was, are you growing as a Christian? Are you growing or are you stagnant? Are you growing or are you, ask your neighbor, are you growing? You know, after last week, I don't know if you went home and did anything about the sermon. If you didn't do anything about the sermon, trust me, you're not growing. If you heard about growth and you went home and your life remained the same, 
you are not growing. Because, you know, the reason we have, you know, preachers come, prepare, and deliver messages is so that God can move in your heart and you do something about it. If you don't do anything about it, what is the point? What is the point? It's just to come, to show up, and to listen, and to go home. That's not the point. The point is when God speaks to you and you feel that is actually mine, that you do something about it. And that's where we are here this morning that we grow again in this series of joy. Next month, we are starting a new series. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Easter story. Again, very interesting uh, what we are going to be learning uh, from the speakers of this coming month that it, God is going to, to bless us. Okay? So Paul is here. He is in prison. He is in chains. And he is constantly, constantly speaking about joy. He is reminding you and me, he is reminding the church in Philippians that regardless of our circumstances, we are to be joyful. Regardless of where we find ourselves in life, we are to be joyful. But today we want to speak about something that brings us joy, that really the society tells us, no, it does not bring you joy. And that is contentment. Contentment. Now, contentment in the Bible is not just a virtue, but it is a command. The Bible commands us to be content. In 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse 8, it says this, But if we have food and clothing, if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. That is what Paul says. In fact, contentment is not based on what you have or what you do not have. Contentment is not based on what you have or what you do not have. Because Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, it says, Keep yourself free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Keep yourself from the love of money and be content with what you have. Whatever you have, little or a lot, God, God calls us to be content. Now, I don't know about you. Are you rich? Are you, do you consider yourself rich? Or you consider yourself, you're a Kenyan. <laughs> Kenyans, if you, have, if you ask a Kenyan, how are you doing? Hey, <laughs> it's like everyone is struggling in this country. <laughs> have you ever noticed? <laughs> everyone, like no one is like, okay, no one will tell you, hey, I'm fine, but then I'm doing okay. No one is always, it's always hey, tunangangana <laughs> Like, unangangana wapi, you just bought a new car. You know, <laughs> it's like everyone is struggling and everyone is always like, you know, I'm not yet there. We are hustling to get there. We are not yet there. But what if you're already there? Have you ever asked yourself, what if you are already there? What if the house you live in, that's it. That is what God wanted for you. And it's fine. What if the phone you have, let me even go lower. The phone you have, guys. The oppo you have, <laughs> or techno, <laughs> or iPhone. What if that's it? So there is this mind shift that, you know, I feel that God and Paul is speaking to this church in Philippians. And there are tools that I want us to grasp from this passage this morning that, that Paul shows us, you know. You know, what I like about going through the Bible is that we will learn a lot of things. But it won't be like random. I won't just wake up and say, you know, today, let me talk about, let me talk about what? Elders in church. Like it won't be random like that. Because we are doing, if, if we came to Philippians and we were talking about elders, we will talk about elders. But today we are here and we are talking about contentment. So that's the benefit of just going chapter by chapter one time uh, and then we will grow all together. Okay? So when God calls us to contentment, it is for our own need. It is for our own good. He is saying contentment is the better way to live. B living a contented life is the key to a joyous life. If you want to have joy in your heart, in your life, you must live a contented life. Okay? So Paul is writing about this contentment, and he wants to give us, and he calls it, he says this, that contentment is a secret. He says it's a secret. Because 
in reality, most people will go through this life and never got, get contented. They will go through this life and never, because you wonder, how many cars do you really need? How many homes do you need? Okay, let's say you need a holiday home in Mombasa. You have it. Ah, yeah, you have a upcountry home in the village. You have it. You have a home where you are. You have it. You have a home in Nairobi. You have it. There are people who have that, true or false. But they want, why? Because contentment is something that does not just come. It's something that we work towards. It's something that we are constantly working to achieve. Okay? And I have a theory. You know, the more people have, the less content they become. The more you have, the less content. Because you'll always be like, hey, I think I want more. You know, you have like a quarter here. You're like, what if I had another quarter somewhere else? What if I had, you know? And you know, in Kenya, you're always, even in your radio in the morning, you're going to work, they're advertising a land. You know, they're always advertising land in this country. How many land can we have? How many places can you live at once? Okay? And I'm not talking about you not working hard to have things. Okay? Things are nice, guys. Having a nice car is a blessing. True or false? Having a nice house where you can walk in, your children have space to play, you know, your wife is comfortable, you are comfortable, a garden at the back, those are good things. But contentment is a secret. And most of us, if we are not careful, we will go through this life running after things because we never learned about contentment. So here we are this morning, and Paul is talking about contentment while in prison. He's not a free man. He's in chains, and he's talking about contentment. So let me give you some five things, you know, that are part of the secret of contentment. This is what I find from, from, from this passage, and I just want to share with you uh, what I feel Paul was communicating uh, to, to this church. Okay, so the first one is, for you to be content, says value people more than possessions. For you to be content, you need to value people more than possessions, okay? So one of the keys to a joyous, contented life is to have healthy relationships. To have healthy re relationships. You see, Paul is talking about loving people more than loving things. You see, because when you love things more than you love people, you will use people. You will not use things, you will use people. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Have you ever met somebody who, you know, they have a car there, but they'll use somebody to do the work instead of the car. Like they are using things instead of using people. Paul is saying we need to value, value people more than things. And when someone gets caught up in the things they possess, they find themselves discontented. You find yourself, you're always thinking about the stuff that you have, and life will never be content for you. He says this in verse 10, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You have revived, sorry, you have revived your concern for me. Paul is saying, I thank God that now you have remembered me. You have revived your concern for me. There's a relationship here. This church was concerned about Paul. They cared for him. Okay, And I want you to have at the back of your mind that the church in Philippians was not a wealthy church. Because as we'll see, he talks about you were concerned for me, but you had no opportunity to give. They did not have the resources to give Paul. But finally, they revived their concern for him. You see, the more I'm around people, and I'm learning that here in Akuru, the more I'm around people who've stayed here for a while, the more I'm starting to tap into the behavior of Nakuru people. Okay? Do you guys know behaviors of Nakuru people? You don't know? I tell you. He? Okay. Let me not offend. <laughs> but positive things. Nakuru people are not in a hurry. <laughs> Trust me, that's a blessing. You know? 
Just go to Nairobi this week. Just go to Nairobi, the city. You'll just be like, where are we going? <laughs> you know, you walk in town, you know, the people are not in a hurry. Guys are relaxed, you know. That is one thing I love about Nakuru people. Because when you, when you meet someone, you know for you, you know, me, I come from a place where I say it's one hour, it's one hour. But we meet and I'm like, hi, hi. You know, conversations are just going. So that's, that's a blessing. Nakuru people, it's easy for you to have relationships in this city. Trust me, one of the blessings of living in Nakuru is that you can have relationships. You can have friends because you can leave work and have coffee with someone. And it won't take you one hour to get home. True or false? Yeah. If you want to go for an e-group Friday, Thursday night, whichever night of the week, you can because you will leave work. You can even go home, pick your child, go with them. True or false? So those are some of the blessings. When I talk about valuing people more than things, valuing people more than your work. You know, it's all about work. You know, come, let's hang out. Let's chill. They're like, hey, Mazi, hey, I'm busy. I'm busy. That's a Nairobi thing, guys. It's not an Akuru thing. It can't be an Akuru thing. It can't be a thing for us as a church that you are always busy, that you are always not available. You will never live a contented life if you value things more than people. All right? Hey, we're song, are you ate into my time? Because <laughs> I'm seeing a point one and I'm already, you know, my time is running. Okay? So it says, you were concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Paul is saying, I love you. It is you that I love. You were concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. I have a relationship with you. It's not about the gifts that you send me. It's not about the things that I get from you. It is that I have an interaction with you. It is not about the stuff that you give me. It is not about the, the, the gifts that you bring to me. It is the fact that we have a relationship, that you are concerned for me and I am concerned for you. Okay? And as a church, I want us to get there where it's not about what you bring on the table. But is that we have that relationship. We have that connection. We, because that is all that matters. You know, when people live in isolation, they start to become weird. Have you ever noticed? When somebody is just by themselves, they start having these thoughts. You're like, I, where did you hear that? They come up with theories where they'll talk about politics and be like, you know, this Azimio and this, you know, Uda. One, two, three. They'll come with theories because they've been spending time by themselves. But when you're out there, you'll hear so many versions until you'll be confused. You're like, hey, who am I voting for? <laughs> Guys, community is everything for us as a church. And we talk about it and we push it and we're like, are you part of an e-group? Or are you just isolated by yourselves? Who are you around? Who are you, who is feeding into your spirit? Who's feeding into your conversation? Who's feeding in your life? Again, <laughs> or it's just memes from friends who are far. You know, it's easy for you to sit home Friday night or whichever night of the week and just scroll your phone. You know, there's nothing you're doing. You're just there on your feed and nothing, really. When we talk about worship cafe, you don't show up. Yet, what were you doing? Nothing. That is where Paul is saying that, you know, relationships is everything. The fact that you revived your concern for me means a lot to me. Let me go on to the next one. Understand that possessions are not the key to happiness. Understand that possessions are not the key to happiness. So the first one was value people more than possessions. The second one is understand that possessions are not the key to happiness. He says, not that I am speaking of being in need. This is Paul, verse 11. For I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. In whatever situation I am to be content. Paul is saying, I don't have to have things to be happy. It's not a must for me to have the latest gadget for me to be happy. It is not a must for me to have the latest or the best or the for me to be happy. Because when we get there, that's when we stop being joyous. Because we are always chasing the next best, the next best, the next best. And we will never find 
contentment. It all comes down to this. Do we possess things or do the things possess us? Do you possess that gadget or whatever you have or does that thing possess you? You know? And when I'm, when I'm looking at, you know, congregation, I see a lot of students, you know, and, and when you talk about this, you're like, ah, lucky me, I, have no, I don't even have a job. I don't even have money. So why are we even talking about contentment? This is the first thing I learned, you know, that before you get there, before you get to the house that you want, your dream house, okay, you need to decide what is enough for you. Before you get it, before you get to that dream job, you know, now you're a doctor, you've been studying for many years, now you are there. Where will you stop? After how many homes will you stop? After how many cars will you stop? Because the problem comes when you, you, you just want to chase. You'll never stop. Because you never put a limit and say, you know, once I have one, two, three, by the way, that's it. Okay? John Wesley once, you know, made a good statement. He says, earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. Earn all you can, save all you can, then give all you can. Not in that order. You know? But that's a statement that is, and I, I found it so profound. You see, Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. This is Jesus speaking. He's saying life is not measured by how much you own. Friends, that is not the measure of life, how much stuff we have. That is what the world tells us. But you also know that the richest people in the world are the most lonely people in the world. Because the more you have, okay, just picture this. You get your place, then you start having money, and then now what do you do? You move to a quieter neighborhood. And then you get there, then what do you do? You put a nice fence. Then you get there, then what do you do? You add a, you know, electric, you know? And then you're closing yourself. The more you have, the more you Close yourself. And that's not the life that God wants for us. It's not a life that, you know, now you're isolated because of the stuff you have. Guard your heart against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. And guys, money is not bad. Money is not bad at all. It's not. It's the love of money. Where now your life is just about chasing the bug and nothing else. You wake up in the morning, you're just thinking, how do I chase that? How? And you're not thinking about anything else except money. You will never be contented if that's all that is in your mind. Possessions, possessions, possessions. You will never be contented. And when you care about money, problems increase. Problems just come. Problems are just arising. Your health will start giving you issues because you're not resting. You're not relaxing. You're, your mind is not even... You're so tense because you're just waiting for that deal to go through. Every single day, you are just deals. Deals. Contentment cannot come if you're in that space. It can never come if you're in that space. So Paul is saying, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation to be content. Paul is in prison and he's saying, I have learned. He is learning something and that is contentment. He's saying, I have learned in whatever situation to be content. Are you learning what contentment is for you? Have you ever discussed as a family, you know, sit down with your wife and say, you know, if we just get... By the way, we'll relax. We will, once we, our business is established, we have this, we will do one, two, three. And we will be taking time off. We'll be visiting our parents. We'll, have you ever sat down and just go to a place and say, learn what is contentment for me? Because contentment for me can never be contentment for you. You know? It can't be. We can't have the same level of content because we have different aspirations. We're in different careers. We're in different places in life. And, you know, I married a different girl from you. Your contentment is different from mine. 
and as a family, our contentment is different from yours. So you have to learn. Are you learning what contentment means for you as an individual, career-wise? Huh? Or you're just living. Paul is saying, I am learning that contentment, that in whatever situation, I am to be content. And Paul is saying, I know what it means, you know. I know what it means to not only be in poverty, but also to have people treat you like you are poor. That's what it means to abound. I know how to be brought low. You know, to be brought low. So you're not just low, but people are also bringing you low. Paul is saying that. I know what that looks like. And he's saying, and I know how to abound. I know how to have. And it is, people know that Paul actually came from a wealthy family. That is the only way he could be able to afford the kind of training and schooling that he had. Paul came from a wealthy family, so he knew how to live in the penthouse. He knew what that meant. And he also knows what it means to be in the penthouse. He knows the difference. He's saying, I know what it means. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Friends, some of us are blessed, you know, and some of us grew up in humble background, you know, grew up, there was no electricity, there was no TV, there was nothing of that. And then now you're in a place where your children will never know what that means. They'll never know. But where do you stop? Owning KPLC. Like, where, where, where is the line? That is what I want us to ask ourselves as we live here today. Where is the line? What does contentment mean for you as an individual, for you as a family? And if you're dating, you know, before you settle down, ask that person, so where is, like, the, where is the ceiling for us? Come and low son up your way. It has to be somewhere where you agree, Okay. So I want, that is the question I want you to ask yourself. What is enough? What is enough for me? What is enough? And what can I settle for? Okay? Because that's what Paul is teaching us this morning. He says, I have been poor. I've been there. And I know that my contentment is not based on what I possess. Because at this moment, Paul has nothing. He's in prison. And he's saying... I am content. I am learning what contentment means because I have been there. I have had it all. And now I have nothing. And there's this thought that when I get this, you know, when I get this, I'll be happy. Have you ever had somebody say this? When I get, when I buy that car, when I buy my first car, I will be happy. You know, this week as I was preparing, you know, on Monday, I, th I thought about the first car, you know, I ever had. It was black Nissan March. I even posted it on IG. Because hey, my wife and I, when we drove in that car, <laughs> we were like, hey, cruising. And it would stop. It would be a Rebecca somewhere. It is overheating. But we were like, hey, we don't care. We have a car. And even at some point, I thought, hey, maybe this is the car I'll always have. You know, I was so content with it. Now when I look back, I'm like, hey, a car that is overheating. Hey, I have two children. I can't put them there. You know, that's where I am right now. But I know where the ceiling is for me. I won't tell you. If you want to know, I'll come and see me. But that's what I'm talking about, contentment. So I was looking at my life and asking myself, so where is the ceiling? Where is it that God wants me to draw and say, when I get there, that's it. That I will not, like... I live life and enjoy fellowship with others and, and people around me. When you say, when I get this, I'll be happy. Trust me, you'll never be happy. Because you, guess what? You'll get it. You will get it. And then you'll be like, no, okay, I didn't mean this. Maybe that. You have to come to a place and say, God, this is all that, this is, all that is enough for me. And I'm not looking or desiring or pushing to have something more and more and more. Because you'll always be moving the goalpost every time you get there. And it, what, if, what happens if you don't get there? If you say, God, I just want a, a discovery. A discover what if you never drive it? 
What then? Will you not be happy? You get? There's this aspect that I'm always waiting for the next thing to be happy. When I get a promotion, hey, I'll be happy. Then you get the promotion. Or you don't. You, in fact, you get sucked. What happens? Does that mean that you know everything is taken away from you? That your joy is taken away from you? That is what stuff does to us. That we place so much premium on them that when they are taken away, we become miserable. And God is saying, I want you to live a contented life. And Paul is showing us that. The third one is remember your relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? Re remember your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Paul comes in 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, in the, in the context of the passage, Paul is saying that I can do the abundance through Christ. And I can do the lack through Christ. That is the context of the passage. He's saying that in the, in the, in the lack where I am right now, Sina, I don't have anything. I'm in prison. But I can do all things through Christ. And he remembers there's a season in his life where he had a lot. He was a tent maker. He made money. And he can do that also with Christ. Because that is the premium that Christ gives to us. He's saying my ability to be contented in this life is not based on my personal strength or my self-discipline, but it is based on the power of God. It is based in Christ. You see, that's the thing that we don't understand, that to be content, it's not our strength to do it. You know, if, if there's one thing that shifts my mind about the things of God is that I don't need my strength to do anything for God. I don't need my strength. I don't need my wisdom. I don't need my knowledge to do it. It's the same thing with contentment. You don't need your discipline. It's like, I'm so disciplined to be content. No. Without Christ, it is impossible for you to be content. You'll always be chasing and chasing and chasing because Christ has not come into you and made you aware that this is enough. And Paul is like, I can do all things through Christ. And what is this thing these things he's talking about? He can do the poverty through Christ. He can be there lacking, but he's like, I can do all things. I am content because Christ is with him. And he can go and have the money and he'll be like, I can do all things through Christ. Because it's not his strength that is sustaining him, but it is God that is sustaining him. He's saying, I can do it all through Christ who gives me strength. And you know, this verse, we use it out of context all the time, okay? All the time, we're always talking about, I can do all things. You know, you're a student, you've not studied, and you're going to into the exam room, I can do all things through Christ. Maybe the strength Christ will give you is the ability to enjoy the F. <laughs> you know, be like, I can do, I can take this F through Christ, you know. Paul is saying, I can do it. I can do the poverty. I can do the lack through Christ. And some of us here, we are going through a season, and we know this verse is true. Because you lost your job. And you're like, actually, if it wasn't for Christ, I wouldn't be here. You didn't know how you'll pay your rent. And Christ was there for you. And some of you, you're living the best life right now. Where God has provided. And praise God for that. You can only do it through Christ. So a contented life can only come through Christ. Okay, number four, be more concerned with the needs of others than your own. Be more concerned with the needs of others than your own. This is, these are the secrets that Paul is giving us from this passage. He says this. Look at what he says in verse 14. He says, even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. He wants the church to receive a reward for their kindness. It's not about Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But what does he want for them? 
He wants them to receive a reward from God. He's saying, what I really care is that you guys grow in your generosity. As you give, that God blesses you. <laughs> this is a man in prison, and he says, guys, I don't care so much that you gave me more than the reward that you get out of it. The giving is good, it's fine, but the reward you get out of it is even more of a, of, of a blessing than anything else, okay? So Paul cares that God is going to bless them. I don't know, but, you know, as a pastor, and most of us pastors, you know, we, we always ask congregation, give, 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 give. But sometimes it, it keeps our mind that the reason we want you to give is not so much because of the need. It's so that you will learn the blessings of God when you give. Because if you give so that I see or so that I can't, I can't give you anything back. I can't. Like, you know, I can't. But God who you are giving to can. Because if you're giving to man, you will expect something. Sindio? You'll expect them to reciprocate. But when you're giving to God, guess what? He will bless you. And his blessings will not be the way I would bless you. You know me, I see you. I'm like, maybe he needs a new shoe. But maybe that's not what you need. Maybe you like your old shoe. And God sees exactly what you need. And he will meet it where you are. Okay? So because this is what he says. He says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He will meet all their needs. That is what Paul is saying. What is motivating Paul? And this is the secret of contentment. Regardless of your circumstance, your situation, your blessing does not come from people. Your blessing only comes from God. The Bible says that God is the one who gives us the ability to create wealth. He gives us the ability. You know, you can want to do it with all your strength, but God is like, maybe not this time. And he won't open that door for you, regardless of how many times you knock. He won't. So when we give to the work of God, when we bless the work of God, God blesses us. And we find contentment. And finally, rest confidently in God's provision. Rest confidently in God's provision. He says this in verse 18. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I'm generously supplied with the gifts you sent me for. You sent me with Epaphroditus. They are sweet smelling fragrance. Sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. So Paul is grateful to, for their gifts. And they are supporting his ministry. If you don't know, this, that's what he's talking about. These people gave to the mission of church planting that Paul did. And they're remembering him at this moment when he's prison. And they are giving to him still. And Paul is like, I am grateful. I have all that I need at the moment. Here I am. I have everything. I'm grateful for this. For your tithes, for your offering, for everything that you continue to do and support God's work, I am grateful for it. And maybe I haven't said this as a pastor here, but I'm grateful that you continue to give and support the work of God. We continue to put the lights on and we continue to, you know, pay the stuff that we have around here. We continue to take care of the property. Maybe I haven't said thank you, but this morning, really, I really want to say thank you for your support of God's work in this place. If you're not giving, we would have shut down a long time ago. But you continue to give. And you're not giving to me. I just came the other day. You're not giving to me. You're giving to the work of God. If you're giving to me, just stop. Stop. It won't help. It won't do you any good. But if you know you're giving to God, even before you leave your house, you'll be like, what am I going to give God today? You'll prepare your gifts. You'll be like, this is what I am going to bless God with because it's not about what you know it's not about what you have you know sometimes we we, we are looking okay what do what did i remain with in my bag to give prepare 
prepare. And he says that when you do that, you know, God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. Paul is like, thank you so much, guys, for giving. For giving to the work of God. For giving to my ministry. And now, may my God meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. Because you give to God. Because you give to the work of God. Now, let him bless you. Not, not me. Paul is saying, not me to bless you. But God, who you give to, blesses you. And when we, f when we learn what contentment is, it also means we learn what to give back to God. Remember, earn all you can, save all you can, and give all that you can. And I think that this is a message that, you know, as a younger generation, some of us need to hear. You know, we are so used at receiving that we don't know how to give. And that's some of the problems in relationships today. Everyone just wants their needs to be met. And nobody wants to meet the other person's needs. Same thing in church. We just want to come, sing, dance, and we don't want to give back to the work of God. Let's learn to give and support the work of God. And this is, you know, I remember as a young Christian, the first verse I ever learned about giving was this one. My God will supply all my needs. So I'm giving to him. My God will supply all my needs. You know, I don't know where this will come from, but my God will supply all my needs. That is what contentment is all about. Knowing that your needs are not met by your hustle. They are not met by your mind. You know, it's not how brilliant you are that you're able to earn the living you, you, you do. See, there are more brilliant people than you. They are smarter people. They are people who work harder than you. But guess what? The person who supplies your needs is God. The person who supplies you is God. The person who meets every desire you have is God and not man. And when you understand that God will provide, when you understand God will provide, regardless of what happened, God will provide. You will worry less and you'll be content with where you are in this season and time. So Paul says this. As he finishes, he worships God. He says, to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. My prayer is that you will grow in your contentment. That you will wrestle with this. You know, we've started our conversations today. I pray that we will wrestle. We'll continue in our e-groups. Talk about what does contentment look like for me? Where will I get to and say, I have arrived and this is it for me and my family. And I'm not really hustling for more. If it comes, it's okay. But I'm not really hustling for more because I am contented with what I have. You know, I want to finish. But before I finish, let me just mention this. You know, my apologies. Today I really rushed um, through because of time. But Paul finishes by saying, greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings all God's people here send you greetings. And he says, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Mm. Especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Now, Paul is in prison. But what is he doing? He's preaching. He's preaching in the palace. And Caesar, who is his captor, his household, is getting saved. And everyone in that cell is getting saved. And the guards are getting saved. That is what it means here. That as he is in that space, he's talking about contentment. Because even if he is in a space where he, he doesn't have the material needs that looks like he needs, the work of God is still happening in his life. And people are still being called. So Paul is chained 24-7. But there are also these people that are getting to know Christ because of the gift that he is to them. What is enough? What is enough? Do you know what is enough for you? Do you know what is enough? Is it a conversation that you're willing to start with yourself and say, you know, God, I know there is bigger things in this life than one, two, three. What is enough? Even for us as a church, we have to get to a place and say, this is enough. You know, we can't build a 20,000 seater capacity. No, we have to know this is enough for us as a church. We can't bite 
more than this? What is enough for you? Will you allow God to help you on this journey to evaluate what is enough and to wrestle? Paul says, I am learning to be content. I am learning what that means. Will you allow God to teach you what contentment is? Or will you just want to hustle in your own way? And let me just say, if you're not a Christian, if you're not saved, it's very hard to know what contentment is. It starts there, making a decision to follow Christ and say, I will follow Jesus because I want to live a contented life. Enough with this hustling and trying to make it and trying to push by my own strength. I want Jesus to lead me and guide me to this place of contentment. Friends, let me just pray for us this morning. Because God wants to give us joy and joy comes when we are content, when we're not running after things, when we are not just about possessions and about stuff accumulating for ourselves. And some of us this morning need to ask the Holy Spirit to teach them, to help them to come to this realization of what is enough for me, what is enough for me. Wewe hututotosheleza baba. Ni wewe unatutosheleza. Hallelujah. Shuka roho na utakaso. Shuka na uwezo wako. Ndani yako tunazo nguvu. It is only in you, God, that we find contentment. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. And we know that in contentment only comes from you. Shuka roho na utakaso. Shuka na uwezo wako. Dani. to pray for, with you this morning if you're here and you have not given your life to Jesus the Bible says that today is the day of salvation now is the hour the appointed time of salvation and we want to pray with you all this is because of you and all of us at some point had to make this decision to start a new life with Christ Jesus so we want to celebrate with you and believe with you that God is going to do something in your life today if you're here just lift up your hand we'll pray together where you're seated, I will see the hand. Stretch it up and I will see it and we'll pray together. If you have never made a decision to live for Christ, this is your opportunity. Praise God that we are all saved. And I want to pray for you if you are struggling with contentment, you are struggling to find this line and you are really hustling because you have not really come to the place where you say, God, this is enough for me. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice this morning, oh God. Father, we desire to learn what contentment looks like for us as your children. And some of us, Lord, we've really been hustling and we've been pushing too hard when it's really unnecessary. Some of us have been trying to define contentment with our own imaginations. So we pray today, Holy Spirit, come and satisfy us. Come and show us what contentment really looks like in our personal lives, oh God. As we are learning, as we are wrestling with this matter of contentment, let us come to the place like Paul and say, I have learned, I know what luck is and I know what it means to abound. And in all these things, I have learned to be content. Because that's where we are. It is a command that you've given to us to be content. So we thank you today. Help us, oh God. And we also pray for this coming week, oh God, as, as we go out, the Holy Spirit, you will lead us in our different spaces, at our workplaces, at our businesses, at our homes, everywhere we are, oh God, schools, 
universities, anywhere, Lord, that we will be, may you lead us and guide us. May you give us, Lord, courage to go out there, Lord, and live for you in holiness and in faithfulness to your word. So we thank you this morning and we give you praise for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Yeah, so we've come to the end of our joy series. Um, next week we start a new series on Easter and I, I pray that God will continue to speak to us. Amen. Were you blessed? Amen. 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 All right, it's that time at our service we give back to God. If you came with your tithes and your offering, uh, this is the time where we give back to his work. Uh, thank you so much for those of you who continue to be faithful, giving back to God's work in this place. Uh, may God continually reward you for, for doing that. If you've not been giving, please just jichune kidogo, give to God's work. Amen. And God bless you as you do that. So we have our, you know, um, M-Pesa details that are coming up there. Uh, please give to that. If you're giving online, we encourage you actually to do that um, more than give the cash. All right. Are you ready? Let me just pray. And then if you're giving in cash, you'll make your way to the front and give on the basket. Uh, if you're giving via M-Pesa, please go ahead and do that. Father, we thank you for the giving of your people this morning. Thank you, Lord, because we know that when we give, Lord, you see. And the Bible says that you love a cheerful giver. So as we give this morning, we give from a place of cheerfulness. May you receive our gift. Let them be a sweet-smelling aroma to you, O oh God. Receive our sacrifice this morning and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So I encourage you to come if you're coming to the front to give in cash. We have envelopes uh, with our ashes there. If you need one, please collect and God bless you as you, as you give. Thank you so much for coming. I'm really encouraged by the majority of you who are trying to make it by 10, you know. So Asante Sana, the worship team is encouraged. They told me, hey, thank you, Pasi, for speaking about that time issue. Hey, so thank you. Remember, our service begins from 10 to 12. Um, and God bless you as you come. Next week, please bring a friend, okay? Will you bring a friend next week? Yeah, we have some seats here, and we want to... Madge Kidogo. So bring a friend, invite a friend to come and uh, just be with us in the fellowship. Um, okay? Tomorrow, teenagers, if you have a teenage at home, please invite them to come. If, you, if you're available, come and help us serve them. This week and next week, if you're available, uh, you're just chilling, okay, you're in that space, you're in between jobs, come and serve here, the teens, th this coming week, and God will bless you as you do that. Let's rise and share the words of the grace. Remember, if you're here for the very first time, uh, we have at the garage there, uh, our Karibu Rudy. Um, please just make your way there. There are friends waiting to meet you and get to know you. If you have not followed our YouTube page, not followed our Facebook page, 
not followed our Instagram page. Not for instead you're following impartial.com. <laughs> hey guys, Makosa. Okay? So please follow our pages, encourage uh, Dilesh and the team that are working to you know to make this production happen. Encourage them by following this. And and there's a lot of you know things, nice things that we we put in there for you. God bless you. Turn to your neighbor, uh, look at them nicely, tell them, may the grace. Amen, amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday.